Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on UFT and this is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching UFT tutorial series. Today we are taking another topic which is at the advanced level and we are also going to start working with modifying the scripts and we call this topic as data driven testing. Generally data driven testing is one of the frameworks as well which allows you to run a single set of instruction for multiple set of data. Now when you talk about this, this is one of the concepts of automation which is also known as repetition of a particular script. Generally when you have tested a particular page or particular module for certain functionality and you would like to try with a different set of data, then of course you don't really have to write the script again and again with hard coded values for that many times. So we have this concept which comes into additional feature of automation testing where you just have to write the script once and you can pass multiple set of data using this concept. Why do we call it as data driven testing? Because data drives the test. Like the test is driven by the data. It's not a controller, not an iterator, not any kind of setting in UFT or any of the tool which iterates it. It just depends on how many rows of data you have provided to the scenario and it will automatically execute for that many iterations and stop. We also know this concept as parameterization, which is just to replace the hard coded constant value to a parameter. As we make use of parameter, we also call it as parameterization. So without wasting much of your time, let's get into the concepts and see that how exactly this can be worked with a hands-on experience. So, here we have got a new test and uh, we all need is a base script. The very first step to prepare your script is very important because either if you want you can write it, if you want you can record it, but generally we do not have the application so we write it. So uh, here we will be just recording the script because we cannot take much of your time to understand this concept. So I've got the application here and we'll be just quickly recording a simple session. So I'm doing the entire scenario. It's up to you wherever you want, you can stop. So it's up to you, say okay. Then let me just select certain values. These are the values which we will be trying to parameterize. So say Frankfurt to Denver, number of tickets as four, find flights, select a flight and hit select flight here and just give a name of the passenger. Uh, say maybe Alex is flying from Frankfurt to Denver and place the order. Once the order completes, close the application and stop recording. Now we've got the script. All we would need is a launcher. That is because uh, for every single iteration, you do not have a manual interface or interaction with the script during the runtime. So to avoid that manual interface, because even if you're involved, then obviously your uh, manual intervention is not recommended in automation and during the iterations it would fail. So uh, this is what the base script is. We always recommend a successful playback no matter you have written the script or you have recorded the script because it's not mandatory that everything gets captured every time. So you always, we always recommend a successful playback which generally creates a milestone. The milestone is about Whatever modifications you make to the script hereafter to parameterize it or data drive it, then if your script fails after data driving it, then you come to know that, okay, the base script was really fine. We checked it. And then after modification, it has failed. That means there's something wrong which went with modifications. But if you do not play a successful playback, then you won't be having a clarity to debug that where exactly the mistake is. Is it the base script? Is it the objects in the application? Or is it your modification for the data-driven testing? So we always create a milestone by playing back the script to just check that everything is still working fine. So click on run and do a successful playback. That's good. So I think our script is working fine. So we have created a milestone now. So whatever changes we make now, we will be only limited to that in case our script fails. So here we know that the base script is working fine. So now the steps required to uh, parameterize it or data drive it. So the very first thing is to understand that you can only parameterize those steps which has user defined values. For example, these are the few things which I have just highlighted quickly to show you that what exactly it is. So wherever you see a double quotes and a value like this Alex name, the fly from city, the username, the password, number of tickets, these are the only steps which you can 
parameterized because a user defined value can only be fetched by the user if it is application dot click application dot click you cannot parameterize that so let's go ahead so you all you have to do is switch to the keyword view which is an easier way to understand we can also work on the editor view so to switch that you can click here and uh, now uh, here are the list of all the values which can be parameterized so let's uh, parameterize some limited options we are going with the from city now so all you have to do is select the value click on this button which is to parameterize and then define the data table select the data table because we'll be using the source uh, to fetch the data using data table click add new parameter and instead of constant you are here in parameter there are different sources to fetch the data from either data table environment random number if in case you are not aware of data table you can visit the previous tutorial the link is in description to help you with data table environment will be upcoming with the tutorial in a few days about environment well how to pass the data from there random number i'll be showing you in the same tutorial so here if you want you can rename the parameter just to create a user friendliness fly underscore from and use the global sheet as of now okay to know more about data table you can always uh, feel free to go to the previous tutorial so to city i'm just repeating the steps select click on the parameterization button come to the data table you create a new parameter select the source as data table the parameter name can be fine it's up to you if you want you can rename it but make sure that it is a parameter it's a variable so it has to be a string if the space are not allowed global sheet okay now let me show you what is a random number so for number of tickets we can use it because here the system generated values can be used so click on parameter button go for last option here random number add a parameter if you want and then just define this the range so now this application i would like to limit it to 1 to 10 only so now what happens when you give the range here every single iteration it runs it will automatically system generates a value between 1 to 10 which is acceptable for this you need to know what application are you testing and what are the list items there for this we do not need a parameter to be created the reason is this is going to be system generated not user defined so if you want it to be user defined you can make source as data table okay so let's go with okay here and we are done let me just quickly show you by going back to the editor view this is a shortcut or if you want you can go from view menu editor as you come back here you can see the changes in the script instead of like this dot set john now it is data table followed by the parameter name and then the sheet name that is dt global sheet which means data table global sheet let's come to the data table at the bottom and you will see that there are two parameters which are created on the name of fly from and fly to which we defined in the keyword view so keyword and editor view are just simultaneous panels where editor view will show you the script and keyword view will show you the tabular form of the script so if you want you are comfortable with writing this script then you can directly do it here itself you don't have to go to keyword view but if you don't find it uh, easy here as of now you can use the editor or keyword view at, the, at this point of time later after some practice when you get confident you can write it directly here so as you know about this tutorial now you can try doing that directly by just replacing the value and say data table followed by the parameter name and dt global sheet but when you're writing it yourself not using keyword view you have to come here double click and then give a parameter name to the column name so we have got the values here uh, let's uh, let's replace it the double quotes are not the values so i'm just removing it uh, why there is a value here because we uh, edited the value using the keyword view so it has captured the initial values let's add rest of the values sydney to portland and uh, then maybe paris to london and uh, let's try with one more maybe denver to zurich okay it's up to you so how does it understand generally how many para uh, iterations to run we call it as the locking of cell here which the underline shows here and if you can see the darker lines at this point of time it is generally to showcase that how many iterations will be executed so the lines which are underlined 
are basically will be the execution uh, iteration numbers. So we have got four row of data and it will be executed for four times. So let's quickly run this and see how the data driven framework works. So just, just make sure that you do not have duplicate application on the script, it will fail. So let's run this and please uh, uh, see that like what values are being used. Anyways, at the end of the execution, we can very well look at the outcomes. We have a problem here. Uh, unrecoverable error. This confirmed as well include the object's item collection. Frankfurt. Okay, I think I've done a mistake. Spelling mistake. Okay, spelling mistakes are not allowed. Frankfurt. Spelling mistakes are not allowed. So make sure that you do not do any mistakes. Frankfurt. I think I was correct. Frank. Okay, now I'm correct. Okay, let's 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 try this one more time. Frankfurt. Yeah. All right. So that's my first iteration. The second one, you can see the highlights here at the bottom. Data table. Concentrate here. Now it will be three iterating for the third iteration. Paris to London and then Denver to Zurich. Nice. So I think we have got all the four iterations executed. Let's move to the result and you can see the result will be for four different rows and you can find them all here. So each iteration will give you the outputs for every single step. And to do that validation, you can just go to the respective steps which you have at right so go to Fly City, Frankfurt, and uh, Denver. Second iteration, it is Sydney to Portland. The number of tickets in first iteration was four. Second iteration was one. Third iteration is uh, seven. And the fourth iteration is five. So this is what is data driven testing. And generally, if you want, you can add more values to it and you can control it using the file settings. And you come to the run tab and here you can see the data table iterations. Generally, by default, it will be on run all rows. But if you want, you can limit it to without deleting the data only for one iteration. Or you can also define which row to which row you have to run. For example, if you have 10 or different set of data already added to data, uh, data table and you only want to run the first five, then you can control this. But there is no such iterator option that how many iterations to run. So you can only control the flow, but you cannot define the number of iteration. And that's the reason we call it as data driven testing. So I hope team you would have understood what exactly the data driven testing is all about. And that was really interesting for you. In case you have any other query, feel free to comment it below. This is a little longer video. And from here on, you will be having a little longer videos because the concept will be requiring a detailed understanding of each and every step what we perform. So pay attention to that and it will really help you to understand the concepts of the high-end automation skills. So anyways, I'm there to assist you at any point of time. Feel free to reach me by commenting below or putting your query there. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep practicing. In case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. That will just help me to know how many people are really interested with my work. So thank you so much team. Take care. Happy learning.